Hey guys, happy Sunday. I hope you've had some time with your families to pray together and to worship with one another. And now we have to our, our special time as a children's ministry together. Today we're going to be in our God and Family series. And we're going to be heading out to the very end. We've been talking about how pizza can help us think about God and our families. And now we're at the end. We're going to do this in two videos like we've been doing before. And this is called Eat, Share, and Enjoy. So we've spent all this time making our pizzas, talking about putting them in the oven and cooking them. And now we're at the part that everyone likes best about pizza. And that's actually having our pizza. And there's a lot of things that are kind of fun about pizza. But before I get into that, let me give you a heads up of what you probably want to have with you. So like always, it's best to have our Bible. And then if you've been working in a notebook, writing down the stuff that we've been talking about with our little questions, pull that out. So something to write with is good. And then for our activity, have some kind of paper. It could be paper in your notebook that you can just rip out or other paper and some scissors and a bag of some sort. So I have, um, I'm borrowing, this is my daughter's little bag. I'm borrowing that today. So today we're talking about the best part about pizza and that's eating it and sharing it and enjoying it. And I know pizza isn't really a food that I plan to eat all by myself. Pizza is something that is so communal. It's something we have together. I know when we were back at church and we were all physically together and we'd have special agape family meals where we'd all be together in the fellowship hall, there was always pizza. Uh, every time we've had overnighters, and yes, those are decorations from the last one on the wall. Um, we put them up for my daughter's birthday. <laughs> We'd always have pizza and pizza is just something kind of happy and for sharing and for enjoying with each other. Pizza is also a food and it's not the healthiest food, but food has a purpose. It's not just something we have. It nourishes us. It helps us keep going and moving and growing and that's something that's part of the whole process with it. So I want you to think about, in your notebooks, write down something your family likes to do together. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just an activity you guys like to do together. And how that kind of activity can help you grow spiritually. So I'll let you think about it for a minute. And I'm gonna open my book too. Did you think of something? So in my family, I know we like, with my daughter, she's very little, uh, we like to play, to play Play-Doh. We did that earlier today and that was a lot of fun. Make, she likes to make spiders and we were making uh, stars out of cookie dough. And that doesn't sound like some big giant spiritual thing, but it can help us grow spiritually because it helps us grow as a family. It helps us get used to talking to each other and spending time together and forming those relationships. And so when we do that, it makes it easiest, easier for us to talk about things about God and it shows love as we're playing together. And love is something that is so much a part of what it means to be a Christian. And love is something we're going to go into. So I'm going to invite you to get your Bibles. And we're going to be in John chapter 6, starting at verse 1. And John is in the New Testament. 
It's the last of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the Gospel is a book that's all about Jesus. John chapter 6. So the Bible tells us all about what it means to be a Christian. It means to follow him. And something that we do with pizza, we're always sharing it, is something that we see really strongly in this passage in John. So I'm going to start at verse 1 in chapter 6. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with the disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take up more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five barley loaves and two fishes. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. So Jesus performs this miracle. And the crowd is, is massively affected. I mean, not only did they have food to eat and were filled, they saw the power of, of God and they saw it to the extreme that Jesus could tell they were going to try to force him to be king. And can you imagine what it was like for that boy? I mean, we don't know a lot about this boy. But we know he has this lunch and it's been brought forth to Jesus. Can you imagine him talking to his parents and his family after all this is done? Maybe he went by himself. Maybe he is with his mom or his brother or something like that. But the conversation after this has happened, mom, I had just this little lunch. And it did so much for the world. It's so much for all these people. There are 5,000 men, plus women, plus children. And it was eaten and eaten. And Jesus took what I had, what seemed small and little, and made this giant impact. And I mean, how do you think his family changed from this moment? This family knew miracles are so tangibly real after what this boy did. How do you think this little boy, when he grew up, his family that he had as a dad was impacted by knowing God is powerful and God is strong and God will take what we have and impact the world. pizzas for sharing but when God calls us to follow him he 
calls us to live lives of sharing, of giving, of serving. And a lot of the ways we used to do it on the regular, they aren't quite the same. So I want you to take that paper we were talking about. And I want you to write down on your paper a couple ways that you can share in this season. Stuck at home, not knowing what to do in your world. How are we sharing? And I want you to write them down on paper. And then I want you to cut them out to their own thing. So maybe write four, or if you have lots of ideas, cool, write them down and cut them to pieces. And then we're gonna put them in our bag. So let's write it down. See what I have to think. So I'm going to start cutting mine out because I wrote down my four. You guys write down your four. All right. So my four I'm going to put in my bag are, I can can share by sharing my time, by giving of my time. And it's a little different than how I used to, but I can call people. So that's what I wrote on this one. I can call people and spend my time talking to people and making them feel loved and special. And kind of in the same way this one I wrote is, is pray for others. So I can share my love and my care for others by praying for them. Put it in my bag. I put uh, donate money. I'm a grown up with some money, so I can give money to the church. I can give money to other groups that can be helpful. And uh, this one's kind of specific to me, but give baby things away. So I have a lot of things that were my daughter's and some things that were brand new. And I know lots of people that are gonna have babies in the near future, lots of people. It's going to be very exciting because maybe when we're finally allowed outside, I can see a bunch of cute babies. Um, so I can share some of those things. I want you to kind of hold on to your bag and think of it like a bag, a lunch bag that you bring your lunch in. That that boy brought his lunch. And you know, none of the things I wrote here were very giant or would feel like they're earth shattering crazy but that boy only had a lunch and God did amazing things with this small lunch, helping people, showing five to 10,000 people who knows how many men and women were there, how much Jesus was valued and to their families and to everyone after that. So I might wanna challenge you guys to give in another way. Maybe take a grocery bag that you do have at home and fill it with food. Maybe the next time you're you're shopping, you might, you know, your family might be shopping online and having delivered. My family does that a lot now. Or your family's going out to the store. Pick a few things to give away and find a group of people to give them to that can help people that are in a worse situation than you are. Uh, our church has on many occasions partnered up with Heart of Compassion and Heart of Compassion is just down the street from our church. Um, they might also just take cash donations. 
too. So I'm going to put um, a little bit of information about them in the description of this video if you want to give to Heart of Compassion. And uh, if you happen to come across this video and you don't live in Montebello or you're not near us, um, I encourage you to look up places near you that you can serve. Or if you happen to know somebody who could use just a little extra help with food, or maybe there's someone with a baby who could use help with diapers or other things like that. So we can help serve others in special ways. So guys, if you are working towards our medal program with these videos, Make sure you let me know that you're working on it and do one of the following things. Plan a pizza party with your family to celebrate all that we've been learning through this program. Or to share with your family something you learned from this week or any of the other weeks that we've been doing this program. And third, send this video to a friend. Send it out to a kid or even a grown-up. Send it to someone so they can hear a little bit more about how the little things we do for God, and the little ways we share, God can take and do big and amazing things with. Also, don't forget, in order to earn the medal, you have to learn the Ten Commandments. And I'll put a link to that song again in, in the description that can help you pick it up. So just let me know once you've done the activity and let me know uh, once you've learned the Ten Commandments so I can put that towards your medal count if you're working for that. All right, guys. I'm so glad we had to have, uh, we got to have this time together and I can't wait until it's safe again for us to physically be together. I miss you. And uh, again, if there's any of you that happen to come across this video that aren't a part of Park Avenue Christian Church in Montebello, California, I'm so happy that you watched this video and I hope you come check out some of the other things we're doing on the video. And if you are local to the church, come check us out when our doors are physically open again. All right. So before we go, I'd like to pray for you guys. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for my friends. I thank you that you take what we have. And even though it could feel small, and it could look like nothing compared to the big crowd <laughs> that needs the food and the vastness of what's happening in the world or just in our lives, that you take the things that we share and you multiply them and you make them grow and you make miracles. Help us to remember that you can use us no matter how young we are, no matter how much money we have, no matter what we're at, that you can use us to do great things. For this in Jesus' name, amen. So thank you guys, and I will see you uh, again on this platform next Sunday. And again, as soon as we can safely together again, uh, be on the lookout this week for some more stuff in the mail. If you have come across our videos and are watching them on the regular and aren't on my, my mailing list, um, please contact me um, with your address if you'd like stuff mailed out um, via a private message on the church Facebook or on my YouTube. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.